Greetings fellow gamers, I'm the Soulsborne Seeker and today I'll be reviewing Kingdom Shell, a dark fantasy action metroidvania title with minor Souls-like elements, released by Cup of Pixels in October of 2023 and currently available for PC, with further plans for consoles at some point in the future. The story of Kingdom Shell takes place in a mythical land that, for the longest time, has been living under the protection of the White Temple, a religious sect that holds in its possession the titular Shell an artifact responsible for the existence of a protective barrier cast around the kingdom, maintaining its peaceful existence by keeping unknown primordial dangers at bay. However, said peace is soon shattered when a stranger with demonic powers assaults the priests holding vigil over the shell, slaughtering them before destroying the artifact, which brings down the magical shield blanketing the world and opens up the path for eldritch horrors to now roam the realm and wreak havoc upon its inhabitants. Desperate to salvage the situation, the White Temple is begrudgingly forced to strike a deal with Elias, a half-human, half-demon hybrid they have been keeping in their dungeons due to his dual nature. The bargain is simple help save the kingdom and he earns his freedom from the White Temple's persecution. With little choice in the matter, Elias accepts the offer and embarks on a perilous journey to restore order by clashing with the monsters that have now been unleashed across the world. But it's not long before he begins to realize that not all is as it seems, as his quest brings him face to face with an increasing number of odd characters, some of whom may know more about him than they let on. The game's plot is quite intriguing and held enough mystery to keep me invested throughout my playthrough, at times surprising me by turning my own predictions on their heads. The tale is revealed using a variety of different techniques, with cutscenes, conversations and item descriptions all gradually offering fragments of the grand scheme of things, sometimes being direct in the revelations while others requiring a bit more thought by the players in order to piece everything together. That being said, I will admit that I felt the story never realized its full potential, with certain plot points and characters either not getting enough attention or simply not receiving any explanations whatsoever as to their role or significance regardless of how important they may have appeared at first. Nevertheless, Kingdom Shell ranks among the better metroidvania storytelling experiences I have had in recent months, something that I largely attribute to its fascinating lore and world history, as well as the setting itself. Speaking of setting, the kingdom features some of the most haunting locales I have ever explored, permeated by a baroque fairy tale theme that truly makes you feel like you're the protagonist of a long-lost folktale full of mythical creatures inhabiting a satisfying array of diverse biomes. From the foreboding gnome caves and threatening fiery depths of the world, all the way to the sprawling witch's forest and the decaying opulence of the fallen high city, you'll get to explore a map full of interesting beings and sites, all of which do a beautiful job of conveying to you the fascinating and tragic history of this realm. Here, credit needs to also be given to the game's presentation, with its detailed pixel art graphics doing an incredible job of bringing this mystical land to life, as well as the music accompanying each area, with certain poignant melodies really immersing you and setting the mood for your journey. On the topic of exploration, the kingdom is home to a variety of different secrets and collectibles, some easier to discover than others. In true metroidvania fashion, you will be coming across many sections that will necessitate the existence of certain abilities for you to gain access to them, some of which may be as simple as breaking down a wall, while others requiring complex platforming acrobatics for you to reach the desired hidden prize. The number of secret areas and optional platforming segments was definitely satisfying, and the discoverables were useful enough for you to deem it worthwhile to venture off the beaten path, with health and mana upgrades as well as gold coins and elective quest items comprising the majority of hidden loot. Discovery is further assisted by a generous fast travel system that allows you to utilize certain crystals as teleportation points across the map, which also dabble as save points and sources of health regeneration. If there is one thing that left a minor sour taste in my mouth in terms of the exploratory aspect of the title, was what I consider to be a slightly inconsistent approach to platforming physics. I'm not entirely sure if this came down to me not understanding exactly how certain movesets worked or if it was an issue of the game itself, but I frequently found myself struggling a bit when it came to certain platforming instances that required you to hit wisps that allowed you to propel yourself further upwards in order to reach higher places or get across chasms. In said instances, I felt like the actual propelling force was a bit inconsistent, with it sometimes getting me as high as I expected, while others getting me much lower than that. I did eventually sort of got the hang of it by realizing part of the trick is how high or low you hit the wisp, but to this day I feel like there's something there that I'm not getting right. 
It's by no means a huge issue, and I never found myself getting stuck in any platforming challenge for long because of it, but it still was noticeable enough for me to worry a bit when it came to some of the more difficult segments of the game. Combat-wise, Kingdom Shell plays it straightforward with its approach to dealing with enemies. On a basic level, you have a melee combo claw-like attack which, for the most part, is more than enough to take down the bulk of foes that will cross your path. Adding to that, Elias can also utilize magic at the cost of his mana bar, which results in much more powerful attacks that can be performed in range fashion, such as throwing arcane daggers and explosives, thus keeping you at a safe distance from your opponents. I was pleasantly surprised to discover that both melee and ranged magical attacks can be incredibly useful depending on your battle situations, with many fighting scenarios I came across necessitating the use of both approaches in order for me to emerge victorious. The game also features a healing system similar to Dark Souls, which allows you to make use of renewable health vials at any given moment in time and keep yourself from meeting an untimely end. Combat, as well as exploration, is further enhanced through the use of Inspirations, another type of collectible that can be equipped through the inventory menu and grant Elias with certain special abilities such as an increased critical hit rate, the ability to magnetically draw coins from a distance, as well as a boost in attack speed, defense and damage, just to name a few. Your magic and basic attacks can also be upgraded by discovering specific merchants from whom you can purchase said upgrades as well as specific inspirations that cannot be found anywhere else in exchange for gold. Talking about combat sequences in which I had to use both basic and magic attacks, none were more challenging than the boss fights themselves. I have to say I was pleasantly surprised by the variety of big bads I squared off against in Kingdom Shell both in terms of their design but also in relation to difficulty and combat approach. While there were a few easy and straightforward boss fights at the start of the game, eventually the villains became much more intimidating and complex to deal with. From a side-scrolling shooter battle to a chase sequence all the way to fighting a giant creature while having to jump around small platforms over a chasm, the game kept putting me in different scenarios where I had to think on my feet and use everything I had in my disposal to bring these formidable opponents down. To top it all off, there is also a variety of different mini-bosses to beat that will put your fighting prowess to the test, some of which are optional. What I truly loved about all the big bads here is that they make use of consistent attack patterns that they mix and match, thus rewarding acute observation and quick reactions without making the fights feel unfair, but more like puzzles that you solve methodically until everything becomes clear. When it comes to overall difficulty, I'd say Kingdom Shell falls under the category of tough but fair games. The biggest challenge is offered when fighting against certain bosses and mini-bosses, as well as specific platforming sections that require quick reflexes. I never really came across any issue when dealing with the basic enemies of the biomes, with very minor exceptions. Lengthwise, it took me a bit over 9 hours to finish the game with a 96% completion rate, with a projected additional hour for me to get to 100%. For a price of about 18 bucks, I'd say Kingdom Shell offers appropriate value value for its asking price, especially considering that it is a game largely developed by a single person. Before I proceed to the verdict, I do need to mention a very specific bug that I came across that caused a bit of frustration at times. Occasionally, during my playthrough, the game would slow down for a few minutes, eventually returning to its regular frame rate. While it wasn't game-breaking by any means, it was a bit of a hindrance when dealing with certain platforming set pieces or facing bosses. I noticed a few more people mentioning it in the Steam discussion forums of the game who also offered some quick fixes for it, though none of those really worked for me. However, I do also need to give credit where credit's due, specifically to the developer, who has been incredibly active with patches meant to address certain issues voiced by the player base and has also stated that this particular bug is next on the list. In conclusion, I truly enjoyed my time with Kingdom Shell. I got fully immersed in its beautiful world, appreciated every minute of exploration despite some platforming hiccups, had fun with the combat and loved most of the bosses in the game. I would have definitely liked for the story to be a bit more well-rounded and provide additional answers, and there was the issue of my lack of full understanding of the aforementioned wisp platforming parts as well as this annoying slowdown bug from time to time, but those weren't enough to mar an otherwise impressive experience. My final verdict on Kingdom Shell is 8 out of 10. What did you think about Kingdom Shell? Have you played it yet? Do you agree with the points I mentioned or do you see things differently? Let me know in the comments below and please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Soulsborne Seeker out!